All right, let's give this a try. So one day I'm going to get the sound working properly. So today I've got just the alerts in my ear. And I've got the sound coming out of my speakers so I can just about hear it. Hopefully it's all right for you guys and hopefully you can hear me okay. <clears throat> Who have we got here then? So we've got Hayes, we've got Fistmaster 2K4. I like that name. I don't know why I like that name. Sounds rather rude. Uh, Mr. G, uh, Amok, Andy Magic Knight. Uh, Colt 45, Busley, Anthony Roberts, music was a whisper, okay. If the music is too low um, and enough people think it's too low, I will um, <clears throat> I will put it up a little bit. Okay, I'll put it up a tiny bit. Thank you for the sub, Anthony Roberts. Welcome to the stream. I don't want to have it on too loud. Yeah, it's. I need to. I need to spend an hour or two just kind of recording videos and, and messing around with it, uh, and see how I do. Um, hopefully, it's a little bit better though. And now I've got, um, as you can see, kind of over there somewhere, uh, which city's playing, who wrote it, um, <clears throat> and you should be able to request as well. We've got new channel. Uh, channel point things. I've not put an icon in for channel points yet. I don't know what I'm going to call it or what it's going to be. I better put that in there. Okay, so I've been doing a little bit of testing today for some stability things. Um, and I wrote a new uh, be, be Right Back screen. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to quickly show you the Be Right Back screen. Um, I'm going to explain basically how it works and we're going to go through and make something similar um, so let's just do that very quickly so this is what we're gonna we're gonna try and make today let me turn my borders to normal So there's a little bit of glitching on this side. Um, I've not managed to stabilize that, but um, I'll explain why that's happening um, uh, as, as we go along. But what I'm gonna try and do today is show you how to make raster bars like this with depth sorting as well. So you can create these, um, um, you can create these kind of looping animations where it looks like the raster bars are going behind and then in front of things. Um, Hey Steps, welcome to the stream. Who else have we got? Eldritch, Commander Jedi. Uh, <laughs> everybody except Eldritch. Yeah, I think I think um, I think um, I think the the levels you did in Luma have completely destroyed <laughs> destroyed Hazy's uh, will to live. Or well, they did yesterday anyway. So yeah, this is this is what we're going to try and create today. So this is actually done without any uh, raster interrupts. Um, this is done just using timing um, and a trick to suppress the bad lines as well, which I'll show you um, when we when we get around to it. Um, so I wanted to kind of first just go through. Um, uh, thank you for the host Hayes. I appreciate it, dude. Um, it feels weird the sound coming out of the speakers actually. So this is um, this is basically just background uh, color changes. There's no border color changes here, just background. Um, the glitch is happening because we've got sprites um, in the middle, um, and they cause some timing issues um, at the edges that I've I've been unable to kind of squeeze out in the time. Um, I did this during a lunch. A lunch break two days ago and I, I just tried to pick it up again um, this evening just before the stream to try and get rid of the glitch but I, I can't do it at the moment so I'm sure there's a really easy way to do it but face cam oh god why is it doing that there we go that's, that's, honestly OBS I like OBS, but there's parts of it that really irritate me at the moment, so... 
Cool. So this is what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to. I'll go through it step by step, um, and we'll we'll try and explain as much as we can as we go along. Uh, so I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it rasters. Yeah, the music's too loud on my speakers now. So we'll do a, a standard start. Thank you for the follow, Triple A. Triple E. Welcome to the stream, dude. So, what we're trying to do is basically change the background colour at a specific point on the screen to create the effect of bars. So, if we if we were just to increase the background colour and jump to entry we get this effect and this effect is happening because we're basically changing every nine cycles we're increasing the background color nine cycles is exactly nine characters one character on the screen is one cycle um, and this routine here takes this increment takes six cycles and the jump takes three so every nine cycles the background color color is updating um, let's let's just uh, let's call this loop here. Um, I've got to keep my eye out as well for the rewards. I think there is a reward viewer, isn't there? Let me see if I can find that because I do need to keep it open. I guess uh, there is. Just in case anybody does request anything, so you can now request. Um, a name for the next label um, and you can also request a SID tune as well hopefully I can find it on the player I'm using the deep SID um, which is a web-based SID player um, but it's cool because it has some playlists I'll just show you very quickly it has some playlists of various um, various SIDs and stuff that are pretty good um, and then I'm using a, a a window clip to grab this name here and stick it in the in the bar down here with some filters to, to hide the background. Okay, so let's just let's just set the the screen up a little bit. Let's let's clear everything to black. Uh, I'm going to leave the text there, and I'll. I'll I'll explain why when when I come to it, but um, I, I want to leave it there so you can you can see when we're rendering text and when we're not. So, so this is the most basic kind of color thing you'll see, and and usually what you'll see this when the game is loading, um, and that's simply because whenever it's loaded a couple of bytes in, it will it will do this increment, and then it will load the next couple of bytes, and then do an increment, and you end up with that the color flash as things are loading. Um, it's used in packers and uh, sorry on packers and it's used in loaders as well so the reason why um, it's happening the colors are changing so quickly is because it's happening every nine cycles so you can see here if we just kind of try and count nine letters so Commodore is nine letters and you'll see that these bands are about the width of the word Commodore so how can we make that fit a line exactly well the interesting thing is, is a line is exactly 63 cycles long. So if we just waste 63 more cycles um, in this in this loop, if we if we increase the number of cycles used in this loop so it hits 63, <coughs> we should get a more a more stable pattern. But there is a problem, and I'll explain that as well in a minute. <coughs> okay, so we're using nine cycles, so we need to waste um, 54 cycles. So the easiest way to do this is with this this trick, where you create a loop and you just decrease the loop. Let me just indent this. You decrease the loop uh, until it's no longer positive and it jumps to here. And this wastes um, the number of iterations of the loop. So ten times five. See the sound's gone really quiet now. Is it because it's gone on to the next track? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it is, because it's gone on to the next track, okay. Uh, this wastes uh, 10 times the number uh, plus 4. So 
So this actually wastes 54 cycles plus the two for this as well. So that's actually 56. So that's too many. So we need to knock it down one. So we knock it down to nine. And well, that becomes 45, 49. Uh, thank you for the follow, um, MK, M Kissing and Lucid Frost. Thank you guys. Welcome to the stream. So this loop now wastes 49 cycles plus two for the init initialization. That's 51. Plus these two here, that's 60. So we need to waste another three cycles. Nop is two cycles, so that's no good. But there is this command uh, bit, which if you do on a zero page address, uses three cycles. It does absolutely nothing. Um, it sets the sets the flags, doesn't change any values in the accumulator or anything. So this is now taking 63 cycles. <clears throat> so if we run this, we, we should see lines that kind of fill the screen. You can see that see there's still a glitch moving across the screen. And this glitch is what's known as bad lines. Now a bad line, if I show this in the debugger, a bad line is when um, your raster line, the, the last three three bits of your raster line match. Let me pause it. It's when the last three bits of your um, raster line, which is this one here, raster Y, you can see as I move down here, or D011, um, it's basically this, the last three bits of this match the last three bits of your scroll. So in this case, whenever this, uh, whenever the last three bits equals three, um, then we get a bad line. Now you can see a bad line in the, in the debug because this little box here flashes. It should happen once every uh, character, basically, once every eight lines. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but it is happening every eight lines. Um, and that's because as the raster goes down the screen, once every once every eight lines, those three bits will match the three bits in, in the y, reg y scroll register. So you can prevent a bad line from happening by making sure that those two never, never meet. Um, now, the bad line is basically when the processor stops doing what it's doing uh, and allows the VIC to do some stuff instead. And what the VIC's doing is it's grabbing uh, the data for the next line. It's grabbing the characters that are displayed on the next line. So if we if we make some changes in here, if we um, let's put the increment at the beginning. Thank you for the host. Cheers. Welcome to the stream, dude. Okay, so this is still taking the same amount of time. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna address this in a minute. So this entire thing is taking 54 cycles, this loop here. Just gonna indent it a little bit. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna load the value that's currently in D012. This is our um, this is our raster position. I'm gonna get the last three bits like this. Uh, and then I'm going to turn on the bits that I would normally need in, in, in the scroll register, uh, like so, and store it. So this is now taking, um, I believe, I believe load is two. Let me just double check. I think it's two. Do you know, I've done this so much and I still forget how many it is. Load, accumulator, media is two. Yeah. So this is two cycles. This is two cycles. This is two cycles. And this is four cycles so this takes 10 so if I just reduce this by two I basically get this down to 44 so we've got 6 plus 10 plus 44 plus 3 so we've still got 63 <clears throat> but now what we've got is we've got the screen kind of glitching all over the place and the reason it's glitching all over the place is because of where we're doing this if we change where we do this and we do it say here instead and do it at the end of the line right, it's still glitching hang on two seven times so it's 35 39 41 44 50 63 okay just need to move things around until I find the right place to do it. Basically, the the bad line happens 23 cycles into that line, so you need to kind of do this before that. Um, 
and actually this is actually making the lines the same so I think what we need to do um, is that which is going to add one so the line is is not the same <clears throat> uh, and we need to take four of this and we do this as six this becomes 34 which is five and then not here uh, yeah not not so that gives us 36 plus 2 which is 40 36 plus 2 plus 2 which is 40 this is 14 54 60 63 uh, a jury Hi Prince Faze, welcome to the stream. Oh yeah, I need to disable them to us, a very good point as well. Uh, thank you for the raid, uh, Jury. welcome to the stream dude. What have you been playing tonight? Yeah, that's a good point. Let me disable the interrupt here. So, setting the inter interrupt disable flag will prevent any interrupts from happening on those lines. Kind of almost there. We need to move the increment. I'm actually, going to move that to the end there because it's set interrupt. I'm just going to make that zero. Just keep the timing and not change a thing. So we're getting the VSP effect here. So if you remember um, the ghosts and goblins. Um, routine that I did, uh, the Ghosts and Goblins kind of VSP routine that I did, this is what it was doing, it was changing these values at just the right point. Um, what I'm going to do instead, just to show the stability, so I'm going to load the value um, in D012 and store that at D021. Still going to take six cycles, but now it's going to be, the colour of the background is going to be static all the way down, it shouldn't flash all over the place. So you can see we've kind of got more stable lines now. There's, there's no jitter down the edges here at all, um, but we are getting um, we are getting strangeness happening. So what I'm going to do before we go into that routine is I'm just going to start at the very top of the screen, and I'm going to wait until um, our raster hits that point. So this is going to uh, wait for raster and then I'm going to do this and hopefully that should move all the glitching over to the edges. No, what have I done there? Uh, don't need that. Still not moved it over. Could you increment a bit to add one or subtract one bits every eight lines? I know if that was multiple every two. Yeah, and this is what I'm going to show you in a minute. There's a real sneaky way. If you don't care about the text on the screen, there's a real sneaky way you can do this. Um, I'm just trying to demonstrate how, how you get around bad lines at the moment. So I'm actually going to move that there and I'll put the load here. So the very first thing we do is we store the background colour. Then we do all this crap, then we load a new background colour and jump there, so... And you see we're getting weird, weird patterns down the sides here. I think it's because we're still matching these. I think if we get the right combination in here, uh, we should be fine. Uh, but what we probably need to do is uh, do the add there instead. Not quite, it's still glitchy, why is it glitchy? Let's count the cycles in here. So we've got two there, we've got four here. We know this entire block takes 40 cycles. We've got 34 for our loop, 36 with the, the setup for the loop, four here, so that's 40. So that's 44, 48, 50, 58, 60, 63. Oh, LDA is absolute fuck. There we go, that's why. Just take one of these knobs off here. Thank you. Yeah, there we go. So our lines look a little bit more stable. We've still got some glitches in here. 
So I'm going to show you a, a sneaky way that you can. Um, so you'll see when I when I do this by disabling the bad lines, I get rid of the text, and that's because the bad lines are being um, suppressed, and all the text is basically never being drawn. The, the, it's getting all the way down the screen without ever fetching anything from the bit. So there's a much easier way to do this. And the way I do this is really simple. I set up two of these um, in the loop. So I'm going to move the loop up here. Um, I'm not going to care too much about this timing in the middle just yet. We'll come back to that in a second. Uh, but we do know that this entire thing with the jump on the end is 63. What I'm going to wait for is um, FA, which is right down near the bottom of the screen. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the value in, I think it's D0, I want to say D016. I'm going to, it's either D016 or D01. No, it's D011 again. Okay. So this trick is what, what's normally used to uh, remove the borders. So let's, let's start by removing the borders and then I'll show you. Um, I'll show you how to do that. I still have an LDA with two timing. Uh, oh, I do, yes. So uh, probably get rid of that knock as well. Let's make this 36 total. There we go. Yeah, that which will sort out that. Doesn't matter. We'll we'll come to this in a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to do this. So you wait for this line at the bottom, and then what you do is you use to do open the board is you switch into 24 row mode, um, which is bit three of D011. So we're just going to set this uh, this manually. So this is basically turning the border um, the the screen into 24 row mode, and then we just wait. A few more frames uh, to zero zero till it goes past that bit, um, and then we set that back again to one B, which is the default. So all this does is it switches from twenty four to twenty five row mode, but in doing so, it the Vic never actually reaches the border. You've moved the border um, out of the way. Um, Yeah, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna comment that stuff out for now. And when I run this, what you should see is that the the borders are opened, and that you won't see that because I've not set a different color. So let me set a different color for the background. So you can see the borders are opened. So that's because when the when the vit gets down to here, it decides what it's going to do on the next on the next kind of cycle, basically. So. It looks to say, okay, do I need to draw a border yet? No, I don't need to draw a border yet because you've moved the 24. When you go to 24 rows, the border shrinks in a little bit and the rest has already gone past it. So it's saying, okay, I'm not at the point where I need to start drawing the border yet, even though you're at already in that area. Then once you go past that point, you can turn the borders back to 25 mode and it will, it will never reach the edge of the border, basically. You're, you're, you're shifting the border around. Uh, the edge of the border around the raster so you never see it. Now the cool thing is is there's also bit 4 in D011 and D011 turns the um, border on and off, uh, the screen on and off permanently. Um, you can't do this in the middle of the frame, it's only it's only actioned at this border edge again. Um, so that's bit 4, so if I change that in here and I do that what you should see is the borders open but no text. And that's not worked because I've done it in the wrong place maybe. Screen off. Screen is called by border. That should be right. Or do I have to I think I have to keep it off as well at that point. There we go. So by setting both um, both of these bit fours to zero, you can basically um, blank out the screen. You can stop it from displaying um, any text in that area. 
and if it doesn't if the vic doesn't have to display any text then it doesn't have to fetch any text which means you will never get any bad lines so there is now no bad lines whatsoever in this location but this is still background color so changing the background color here will affect the color in the middle and changing the border color will affect the border color like so so set a nice combination like that so we have no bad lines and we can we can check that by going into the debugger and you'll see the little bad line box here no, not once does it flash now the debugger does have some issues uh, with this mode in that it can't really display what's going on properly color wise here uh, I don't know why that is, I think that's a, a problem in the debugger, but on the, on the real hardware and, and certainly in Vice it does run correctly. Um, but in terms of what you're seeing um, bad line wise, you can see not a single bad line anywhere down here. So what does that mean? That means that from this point on, any rasters that I do will always take si any any lines that, that, um, that happen will always take 63 cycles. So what I can do is I can do the same thing again here. So let's um, let's wait again for another line. So let's wait. Um, let's wait somewhere in the middle of the screen. So let's let's say like that. Um, and I'm gonna actually yeah. The, the, so we're just gonna store. So this is where this is gonna be the start of our little loop here. And we're just going to store the raster value, the current line value uh, in D021. Uh, let's just keep up with things. Can you increment a bit to add? Yeah, yeah, okay, I read that bit. Hey, old school coder, welcome to the stream, dude. Still have an LDA with two timing. All right, I think that was ages ago, wasn't it? Okay, so let's let's redo this now. So, so we want to store the the value, and then what we want to do here, um, eventually we're going to jump back to uh, we'll call it outer loop. We'll put this up here. And the final thing we're going to do here is we're going to uh, load the current raster line. We're going to compare it with our endpoint. So we'd make our endpoint um, E0, for instance. And if it's not equal, we'll jump to loop, which is here. If it is equal to E0, then we're going to come back to here and we're going to do our open and close border thing again. Um, okay, so let's have a look how many cycles have we got already. So this is four, this is four, not two. Thank you for reminding me that. This is two. And in all cases where we are still within this loop, this is three. So if a branch is taken, it's three cycles. If it's not taken, it's two cycles. So we're up to 13 cycles now. So what we need to do is we need to waste 50 cycles. So let's do the trick again. So we'll we'll put um, nine in here. So this is two, and this will be nine times five plus four. So this is forty-nine. So that gives fifty-one, fifty-five. 64. So this is too many at the moment. This is one one cycle too many. So let's drop this down. So that now becomes 44. So it's 44, 46, 50, 59. We need 63. So we need to add two, uh, four more cycles. So NOP is two. So add two more NOPs, like so. Oops. Uh, 
getting a little bit of jitter. I'm not sure why we're getting that jitter. I'll check that out in a second. It's probably to do with this this value in here. Uh, oh, that is odd. Why is it jittering? Let's just move it down on and see if that makes a difference. I think it's just the first value in here, so I think if I was to do to do that, it would probably be alright. Yeah, there we go. As you can see we've got all these lines they're nice and stable um, if we wanted to we could um, add a border in as well uh, get rid of these knots and we still should be on the right number of cycles now you can see here that we do have a pretty stable raster because they're coming at the same time but you can see that this is moved all the way over here so what you can do um, you can just do this same thing again here just before you enter the loop so you can kind of stabilize a bit closer to the edge so if I put this in here um, and put it to 10 that becomes 54 plus this 2 56 I'll put that plus 2 in for here and that should move the the stabilized uh, portion over so you see where this break is here so this should move it 54 that way so we should see it over here somewhere oh it's gone completely no it hasn't gone completely because if I go into debug borders this is why debug borders are useful you can see it's actually here so it is it is outside the border um, it's outside the visible border but it is still there we can we can reduce it down and we can get it close to the edge even with those borders as well. So if we did this with 9 for instance, uh, that's going to bring that down to 51 and that might actually move it right, right up to the edge here. No, not quite, it's still, still over a little bit. But to be, to be honest with you, the debug borders are, are there so that you can see where these things happen so in fact it's stable and it's outside the, the normal borders it's fine so if I put it back into um, let's put it on full even on full you can see full borders we're still not getting any glitching at all and the reason that's happening is because we don't have any bad lines the downside of that is you can't have characters on the screen and this is why when I did um, this I'm using sprites uh, not this one sorry That's why this is using sprites. And it won't load. Don't know why it's not loading. Interesting. Huh. Seems to have broken it. So that's what the glitching is here. The glitching is because there's sprites on the screen and, and this is the only way you can actually get additional things on. Um, the problem is, is when you add sprites to it, the timings screw up as well. So and if, whenever there's a, a sprite shown on the screen, uh, on, a, on a line, then it eats some cycles as it, as it um, has to fetch the data for those sprites as well. Um, but it's fine. I mean, what what I've done, and I'll, you'll see when I when I go for a break, is I've just cropped the video, so you can't actually see those anyway. Um, so yeah, bad lines. Bad lines are fetch um, character data. Sprite data is fetched differently. Sprite sprite data is fetched uh, just before the line begins. Um, and then yeah I'm using I'll, I'll demonstrate in a minute um, how we get depth but I'm using um, a kind of depth buffer to decide whether or not to show a sprite or not so 
basically I'm um, switching the banks for these sprites to uh, banks where there are blank data so that nothing gets drawn at that location. Can you not use the FLD trick to move the screen down and get rid of the glitch? Yeah, FLD will do the same thing as well. So you could have raster bars with some text here if you use FLD to push push the screen down. Because FLD is, is basically doing the same thing. It's getting rid of bad lines. Um, but you couldn't have the raster bars and the text overlapping without bad lines being introduced as well. What about in intros or demos where they have charts at the bottom of the screen but also moving raster bars above our stable? Uh, they're probably doing exactly that. They're, they're probably suppressing bad lines until they get to a certain point. Uh, the text is probably drawn at the top of the screen, but they're using bad lines to put, uh, suppressing bad lines to push it down, which means they can have stable raster bars. You can, you can stabilize with text as well. I mean, it's not impossible. It just takes some tricky kind of timings. Um, as I say, I'm doing this without any raster interrupts at all. This tune's annoying. I'm going to skip this one. Okay, so let's uh, let's get rid of the border one uh, and just keep the, the foreground ones. So we need the knobs in there as well. <laughs> Sorry, I found it was it was grating on me a little bit. Sorry, cheers. It was a Ben Dalglish tune as well. It was good, but it's just a bit a bit too in my face. If you want to, we want to request one, and there is uh, in the channel points wherever it is. It's over that way, I guess, down there. Um, I'm guessing people have quite a lot of um, buying a commando level round tune. Okay, let's have a look. Um. Tim Follin, yeah. I don't know, is it that one? I have no idea which ones they are. <laughs> it doesn't actually tell me what the what they are, it just tells me that there's tracks. Cool. Okay, I've also got to label the next label, Label. <laughs> okay, so... So this routine is basically just... Getting, the, getting us ready to be able to stabilise uh, the rasters to do this stuff here. Thank you for the follow, Commander Jedi. Kind of crazy this tune, I like it. So, how do we do something a bit more interesting than, than just showing um, bars like this? So, if we want to have some colours, so we need some colour ramps. So, let's start by adding a couple of colour ramps in the bottom here. Um, I'm going to do something really simple first. I'm just going to do. Um, uh, really, really simple one, similar to one. In fact, I can just steal it from this one. Let's, let's steal the raster bars from in here. Let's take a red one. Uh, 
so this loop here needs to be timing critical. Um, so it's a good idea to make sure that this this entire loop is is on a uh, fits within a page because if it crosses beyond the page, which it isn't doing yet at all, you can see here, um, then some of the timings will screw up. Um, <clears throat> But this is fine at the moment, so. Who is this Tim Fallon? This is really good, I like it. Um, okay, so <clears throat> we've got this colour ramp here. What we can do is. Um, change um, the way we do this loop a little bit so uh, we're, we're going to grab a value from this table the way we're going to do this we're going to transfer um, actually we're going to end that with 0, 07 which is two cycles uh, we're going to transfer that to the extra x register which is two cycles then we're going to load value from here four cycles and then that will be stored here so <clears throat> we need to remove eight cycles so if we do if we knock this down to six that will go down to 34 so that's removing 10 um, <clears throat> and then we need to add two more cycles in If that went down too far or not let me know I'm gonna switch back to another playlist now because I think that is the entirety of that that song um, let's have a look we've got progressive favorites electronic favorite ultimate Sid list this sounds interesting <clears throat> um, stick it on the shuffle That's not I've just done the same tune. There we go. <clears throat> okay, so our timings are wrong here because this is all over the show. Um, oh, and that's because this should actually be inside here. Like so. There we go. And so there we go. So we're just messing around with what's going on inside the loop, but we're trying to keep it always at um, at six cycle at, at sixty three cycles. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm actually going to do now is put this into the Y register and store it here like that, like so. Uh, in this case, Y here. Yeah, yeah. So now we've got we've got some actual kind of bars that are going on here. Um, one thing we do need to do is when we exit the loop, set the border color back. Sorry, the background color back. So we've got a bit of a flick here. We can knock that out um, here by doing something like this. We'll worry about the flicker in a bit though. I know it's too long off actually. The flicker's not important anyway. I, I'm just gonna get uh, gonna get rid of that. Leave it at black at the moment. In fact, that should probably do it. 
No, it's still flickering on that last one. Don't know why it's flickering on that one. Let's leave it red. It's fine. <laughs> what, you get copyright strikes again? Well, I've got the music recording in a separate channel now, so who knows? We'll give it a try. See what happens. Okay, so we've got these bars. So what we can do now uh, instead, if we wanted to, um, we could uh, da, da, da. let's create uh, an index in here so what we'll do here is we will create um, we'll increment our color index and we'll load our color index and it reads 0, 07. <coughs> um, transfer it to Y and load color amp, comma Y. Store it there. We'll do this with the Y register so we can, uh, with the X register, sorry, so we can mess around with the other things. And here, what we will do is we will increment a Y. Um, actually, increment it, transfer it, and it with seven. Transfer it back. It's probably a way more efficient way of doing this. I'm just kind of messing around for now. This is the precursor to doing the next bit. Um, like so. And that's two, 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 four. Okay, so this is 10, 12. This is. Uh, 9 says so 21. Uh, ignore that, not for now. 25. Uh, 59. So it's 63. It's exactly 63 in this entire loop. It's cool. And so, what that's going to do is it's going to basically increase the index so our, our bars will actually move a little bit as well. So, our timing's off a little bit. Um, that's because We've done more stuff up here, so we need to change this a little bit down here. Our, our kind of pre-timing for this. And there you go, you can see it going in. Okay, we do need to set uh, the color when we exit. In fact, we don't even need to load it there because the, the X register has already got zero in. Well, it's got E zero, but it's enough to... I've done it in the border, it should be there. Oops. There we go, so we've got moving raster bars. Now, if you don't care about stable timing, um, you can do this um, without the without the, the stable timing stuff, um, and you, you'll get glitches over here, but then what you can do is, um, if you keep the text on the screen, you can invert the text. Um, so the text is basically, you're punching holes in, in solid objects. Um, to give you an example so so instead of having your letter a drawn like that instead of having an a like that you would invert it so now it's actually you see in the background through the holes and that's when you see shoot up construction kit and they have that uh, that scrolling color through the text that's basically what they're doing there um, but we're going to take this a little step further and we're going to we're going to introduce multiple different color bars um, which we're going to move around independently of each other uh, and we're going to use um, basically a depth buffer to to work out which ones we need to draw at what, what point so this is where we're going to do all the time in critical stuff we're going to do it in here um, and this is what happens when we exit the loop. So this is going, this bit here is going to be update bars. 
And this is where we're going to do all the code that updates our raster bars. <coughs> so let me just look, I just need to remember how I did it on this one. I think I just had one index. I did. Yeah, bar index. Okay. So I'm just going to change that to bar index. Uh, keep that the same up here for now. We'll come back and change that in a minute. Um, okay, so what we do we want to do? We want to move the bars as if they're going around in a circle. So obviously the way to do this um, is to use sinus tables. Um, so we use a sinus y table to move things up and down. Uh, and basically, so the equation for a circle is um, sine angle plus cos angle, um, uh, I think it's uh, radius, and if you plot all the angles from 0 to 360 you get a, you get a circle. So we can use that to actually fill um, a table with values that will create a circle basically. Um, our circle is going to go in the in the y and the z so back to backwards and forwards through the screen not the y and the x so we could have things you know circ drawn in a circle like that but because our bars go all the way across the screen we can't really change the x position in the bars you do that with sprites but you wouldn't do that um, <laughs> i just realized i need to be calling the next labels okay so i i'm actually gonna i'm actually gonna honor these but i'm regretting it already so there we go. This is Acmafin's request to call this label label. And I'm going to write next to it that it's a sinus y. <laughs> you want Vix vapor. Vice vapor. Okay. And I'm going to fill that with sine value. And this can be sine. Uh, It's not math pi, it's just pi, isn't it? Pi times two. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of regretting this already. Uh, so that one's done. Uh, Andy Magic Knight wants vice, vice vapor. <laughs> ah, do you know what though? I'm going to be sneaky. <laughs> so I can use both label names just in case anybody's getting confused. Oh yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, actually that's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna honor the honor the label so it gets used. It's going to make uh, people who go looking for my code really... <laughs> okay, those labels will come up soon, so I've got two more labels to do. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got these two, two signs now. Um, and what these... Uh, are going to do is give us a value um, from from minus one to one. So we need to we need to adjust this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up um, a few labels here. So we're going to have uh, bar start y bar end y. And this is fifty, and I think it was e zero, wasn't it? We set down there. Actually, I need to use some of the things so. And I was going to do it. I'm totally regretting it. I'm, I'm rethinking this already, but <laughs> so this is our start and end position. So let's go and put these in here. So this is um, 
of this location here and our end position is here and what this also does is it gives us a range of values and so we know we want this minus one to one to fit inside this this range so we need to multiply it by um, the range basically which is and then we need to add uh, the star of the range uh, that's not quite right is it that gives us it needs to be that divided by 2 plus that times is that right hang on let me think about this actually it's not I can I can start I've already done this maths Two, uh, God, I did all sorts of stuff. Do you know what? I'm going to go for a, a quick smoke, um, and when I come back, we will we'll work this out. I think <laughs> I think on Saturday I'm going to limit the number of labels as well. Uh, yeah, all right. I'll be back in uh, two minutes, guys. Be right back. All right, I'm back. Uh, okay, yeah, so what I need to be doing is this. This gives us a range from um, a, a minus. So if our range is 100, if our bar is 100, uh, the, the space is 100, then what this will do, it will give us a range from minus 50 to 50. So what we need to do now is, is add... Um, I'll, I'll replace these numbers with the constants in a minute, but um, we need to add our our start bar plus this value again. So actually, I'm going to calculate that here. So I'm going to call this half range, and hopefully nobody's put a request in. Good. ridiculous there we go that should give us the right values now X is different I'll explain that um, I'll explain that when we come to it but um, yeah I might need to <laughs> I might need to disable the label I, I don't think I'm gonna do this on Saturday because the code will go a bit crazy if people start labeling naming labels crazy things whoops I just tipped sprite down me Still waiting for a Sprite sponsor, by the way. I drink enough of it on stream. There you go, maybe if I turn it to the camera. No, X we, X is different. I'll explain that when we when we come to it as well. <laughs> That's a good one, cheers. That's a good one. Okay. So I'm going to align these tables, and then the next table I'm going to put in here is uh, color list, and this is going to be just a long table uh, full of zeros to begin with. And so what we're going to do when we update the bars, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clear that table. So we're going to load x with our start location and we're going to load zero and then we're going to store that in color list comma x oops increase x compare x to <laughs> Oh god, yeah, these, these, I'm regretting this already, really, I'm regretting this already. Okay, and this is going to basically ensure that we always have zeros in, in the right location on screen. Now, the reason 
I'm doing this is because what I'm going to do is in this list up here, instead of loading a value from color ramp, I'm actually going to load a value from this list as well. So I'm going to, let's, let's get the initial value. Um, so ignoring uh, bar index, um, we're basically going to load uh, whatever's in D012. Uh, I'm going to increase it by one because it is going to be the next line that it does it because of this. And then we're going to load color list <laughs> haze. <laughs> Oh god. Yep. Um, and now we're going to do the same thing in here. So we, we, we need to load uh, we want the next line and then we're going to load color ramp comma y. So let's go and count our cycles again in here. Okay, so our cycles are uh, 10 here, um, 9 here, yeah, 9, so that's. Actually, that leave that. Okay, so 9, 10, 19. 23 so we need 40 cycles here we've got 34 36 so we need one more knob in here that makes it 40 so we shouldn't see anything this should just go that needs to be vice underscore vapor oh we are seeing some bars i don't know why we're seeing bars they should not be being so color list comma x color list should all be zeros. Oh, because we're not actually, we need to branch not equal. There we go. And that is because this needs to actually happen after this border change here. So I'm going to move this border stuff down uh, this because the border the border switch didn't happen at that point so I'm gonna move so there we go oh and that's that should actually be here, there we go. Right, so we should just get. I don't know why we're getting this weird color in the middle because that that should not be. Oh. No, that's that's correct. Hang on. Color ramp. Oh, because I'm loading color ramp, it should be color list, that's why. There we go. There we go, we've got black in the middle there. And so now if we change the colors in that list, they will display those colors on the screen. <coughs> uh, the deadline is whenever you want it to be. I mean, it's just, uh, I've, I've posted four of the cartridges out. I've got another four that I just need to finish the soldering on there will go tomorrow or Saturday um, and then there's uh, yours chizzes and haze I think uh, for the final ones I need to uh, need to send out so so this is clearing the bars but now what we can do is we can we can go through um, up, we can take our bar index. So if we take, um, first of all, let's make sure bar index is incrementing every frame. 
uh, which it's not doing at the moment. And if we just do something really simple, like um, put a white white into uh, color, so we we just we're incrementing the bar index, which is going from zero to two five six two five five, and then back again. And we're going to put the color white into that location. And what you should see now is when it comes through that that area. Um, you should see a white line move down. I don't know why it's never clearing at the bottom. Probably needs to be one less actually. So this would probably actually... Uh, it's, it's fine anyway, it's because we're moving it down. But you can see we can, we can put colours in here now and they will move down. So if I do... Um, If I just take bar index again and add see we can control what goes into that list. I only sent a few game names that yes, yeah, I've I've done I've done your card. Uh if that was yours no, yours is in the next batch. Um I couldn't tell you what's on yours, but um if you sent me the names of some games I would have put those on and then I would have put the common common things that um, people ask for as well. Okay, cool. So you can see how we can add things to that list. So we will increment the bar index, but now what we're going to do um, is we are going to actually let's load it into the uh No, so let's load it into there. Um, and now we can load this value. Transfer it to the wire register, and now if we put uh, a color in and store that in color list, comma y, we should see a bar that follows that that pattern. And it's getting stuck at the bottom down here. I think that's just because we need to actually add one to um, the start and end of our list. In fact, we can do that by just reducing this. Uh, do that that should theory yeah there we go as long as it doesn't disappear at the top and you can see it's following now that's that's sweeping sign <coughs> so the next step is to actually put a color ramp into that location instead so Let's put um, another label in here. Bar size. <laughs> I've got to use the next label, and that is. I apologise for this. Cheers. <laughs> and we're going to just going to reduce um, this. By that much as well. Oops. So we've got a sign position here, and this is in the Y register. Um, what we can now do is create a loop where we load. Sets and increase Y. And 
And now we've got a, a coloured raster bar that's moving around. So if we add two bars in, how do we deal with that? So let's imagine we've got these, like, let's create some temporary variables here as well. So, um, the next one is acmafins. Name the next top code. Yeah, you know, I did consider putting like um, uh, put, putting one in where for, for like five thousand or ten thousand, where you can request that I do the last block of code in a completely different way, which would have made for some very interesting pieces of code. Or like do the do the next piece of code without using. So I'm going to store um, our bar index uh, here, uh, and I'm going to create I'm just going to put two bars in for now. Write the next block in Z80. <laughs> so what we can do here now is we can um, uh, if we just add uh, twenty to that, store it back again. transfer that back to the X register and then decrease our bar character and if it's not equal go back to bar loop now it's going to do this twice it's going to do one bar and then it's going to do the next bar offset by 20 and we get this effect but you'll notice that one bar always goes behind the other bar and that's because they're being drawn in order so what we're going to do um, I'm going to create another variable in here. I'm going to call it bar spread. And this is basically going to be how much of the uh, full circle do the bars take up. And we're going to use that to do this add in here. And the way this is going to work, it's going to be, thank you for the follow, Begilos. Welcome to the stream. Oops. Music's gone very quiet. Try skipping on a track. There we go. Don't know why it went so quiet. <gasps> Did he now? Did he now? I didn't notice that tricked me how dare he I need to find that oh he did as well oh no he did he did redeem uh, he did redeem it as well that's fine I don't know what this tune is but it's weird <laughs> Random on the <laughs> Oh no. Okay. I don't need that yet, but it's coming up. We must be running out of these by now. 
keep the change, thanks. Um, okay, so now if I change the bar spread in here, uh, so if I keep it really low, then the bars will be very close together. Whereas if I if I spread it out to a hole, actually they're on top of each other, and that's because it needs to be. Uh, Hang on, let's think about this. It would be that, wouldn't it? There we go. Yeah, there we go. So now the bars are at the opposite sides of that circle. Um, and by changing the spread, we can, we can define how, how much of an arc of the circle they take up. So this is, they're both very close to each other on an arc, like so. So now the next step is I'm gonna put another color ramp in. Uh, I'm not gonna do very much. I'm just gonna change uh, a color on the edge here. I'm also gonna put uh, another align here just to make sure. And this time when we look at color ramps, we're going to actually change the value here. So this is a self mod. <laughs> self mod, random unknown un label, okay. So this will always be zero. Um, here. Um, and we're just going to change this value here. Actually, no, sorry. That's not correct at all. It is going to be color ramps and we're just going to change the second value. And we're going to do that by grabbing the bar countdown. do that with X register here so decrease it by one uh, actually can we do no do it like that yeah oops so now we should get two different colors and they're not moving moving oh because we need that X here there we go that's not quite right because it's getting the blue from one uh, oh because what I need to do is I need to times this by 8. Uh, there we go. Because our, actually, do you know what? E easiest way to do this, because we can change the bar size as well. So before we start the loop, we're going to set that value like so. Uh, oops, what have I done here? And all sorts of weird stuff, it's all wrong anyway. Uh, like that, there we go. And then at the very end here, I will uh, But you'll see that the blue bar is always in front of the red bar and this is where our depth stuff comes in so it becomes really obvious if we increase the number of bars now so if we do like eight bars i 
much we need more colours, don't we? Let me go and grab the colours from this one. I can't be bothered figuring those out, I'm just going to clock in from here. So you can see it's not quite right, the bars are, are not going behind, the, the, this brown bar is always in the front and this red bar is always at the back. And so this is where, this is where the, um, this one comes in. So with a colour, when we set a colour in this table, we're setting values from zero, um, from zero, zero to zero F because the colour only uses the lower nibble. That means we've got an upper nibble that's doing nothing. So what we can do is instead of, um, instead of just storing a lower nibble, we can store the depth of that bar in the higher nibble as well. So we'll do that by creating a range uh, from zero to seven plus uh, zero, eight, there we go. So now this will range from one uh, to one to F. So if it's zero, there's no bar. If it's one, there's a bar, but it's as far back as it can be. If it's F, it's right at the front. And we just add that to our, our bar lookups here, uh, where we store in the table, uh, which, where was it? This one here. It's getting difficult to read this. And we'll store this at another temporary variable, which is So I don't even know why patty label, but okay. So now we know how far back the um, the things. Are. And if anybody has done three uh, D um, stuff before, um, it's the next the next temp var memory address. <laughs> oh dear. Ah, Patty Label is a singer. Patty Label, I see. <laughs> As if anybody's done um, 3D stuff before, you'll know about the Z, Z buffer. And the way that works is whenever you draw a pixel on the screen, um, obviously the pixel is being drawn from a 3D world, but you're drawing it in 2D space. So what you do is when you draw it, you draw the color to the screen at the X and Y position, but then you also store an additional value in what's called the Z buffer. And the Z buffer is just a, a, you can kind of imagine it like a, a black and white version of what you see on the screen, um, which is a depth map. So things that are black are really far and in the, in the distance, things that are white are really close to, to the front. Um, and we'll do the same thing. We'll store a value from zero, which means it's not there, uh, to F to say that it is there. And the way it's that a depth buffer works is if you draw a pixel, say you've got uh, two cubes overlapping each other, and you draw this the, the, the frontmost cube first, when you go to draw the second cube, every pixel that gets drawn, before it gets drawn on the screen, it checks the depth buffer, and it says, is, is the pixel I'm about to draw behind any pixel that's there already? And if it is, it just discards it and doesn't draw it. Um, and this way, you're only drawing stuff you can draw things in any order and you're only drawing stuff if it is actually visible on the screen. And so we're going to use the same technique here. So we're going to basically, we're going to take our depth um, <coughs> in the same way that we grabbed our Y position, we're going to get our depth value. And then we're going to check before we do any of this, um, we do need to do, do need to do this bit. Oh my god, I'm trying to remember what I see. Yeah, this labels thing is a bad idea. We need to do a check here, basically. 
So what we need to do is we need to load the value that's already there and we need to compare it with the value um, in, this, in this depth here. If the value that we already have in that location is less than this value, then we can draw it. So if it's less, we can go ahead and we can draw. Otherwise, we need to skip to this bit. So actually, it should be this way around. <clears throat> and this means that also what we need to do is we need to or this value with the depth. So when we store it, we, we grab that value and store it in there. Also means this entire value needs to be multiplied by one zero. <clears throat> now with a bit of luck that should give us glitchy bars. Okay, cool. Let's have a think about what's going on here. It's kind of, it's, you know, I regret doing these labels. I will not be doing this on Saturday, that's for sure. <clears throat> Yeah, definitely, won't, definitely won't be doing these. Oh, thank you for the follow, Begulos. I, I, th I think I missed that. I'm not sure why. I should have should have the audio on. But maybe my headphones have decided to stop. Let me repeat it just to see if I could hear it. Oh no, I did hear it. Okay, I just missed it. I think. Fair enough. Strange. <coughs> Thank you for the follow, Gren Grenade Raven. Welcome to the stream, dude. So, when we come into this loop, we grab our position, which is correct, which is our Y position. Um, we grab the color that's already in the list and we compare it to um, the depth that we have. And this should be fine, I think. Just trying to think about it a little bit. Uh, ah. It's the self models in the wrong place, that's all. Because they've got stupid names, I'm not I'm not spotting them. This isn't gonna be the easiest one to, to follow. No, it's still flickering all over the place. Um, <clears throat> why is that flickering? What's going on? It's like the colour it's grabbing is incorrect. Which is this. Let's just take, get rid of that. Let's just see what happens. Thank you for the bits, Gren Grenade Raven. Appreciate it, dude. <clears throat> okay, so it's not storing the depth bit properly. Um, so let's have a look at why that's not happening. It should just be this bit here. Um, we load our color ramp value, and then we add our depth value. Let's try it. I mean, it should work with a normal. Let's try it with an add. I can't see it being any different, but um, no, it's not. Okay. Oh, I know. I know why. It's because that needs to be a flawed value. Because if this isn't flawed, this comes out as a, as a floating point number, which then is not going to always be just the upper nibble, it's going to be the lower nibble as well. <clears throat> and there we go. So now if you follow one of them, you'll see it goes behind, and then when it comes over the top, it goes in front. And so now we've got a feeling of depth to it as well. <coughs> mm. 
Now, obviously, this effect only works best when you've got it going behind, in front and behind something as well. Although one thing you can do, and this is kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> so when you color the bars, I did this. I did this last time, but I couldn't quite get the effect looking right. So let's have a go and see if we can do it this time. Um, <clears throat> Oh my god, these labels. Yeah, definitely not doing this again. As a, this, this is a bad move. <laughs> this is a bad move. I need to think of another way you guys can input on the code. But Andy said to me before the stream that, that the labels were going to be a problem. And he's right. <laughs> he's really right. And, and the thing is, I'm still putting stuff in front of them as well, so... <clears throat> Um, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so we have we have this value here, right? The the bar size chisels a twat. Now, what we can do is before we go into into that loop, we can take our depth value here, mm -hmm. um, and we can use this as a as a limiter. For, for this thing here as well. So um, I'm going to hard code this in. So if I just take that value uh, and divide it by 2, that value is now going to range from 0 to 7. Um, and then if I add 1 to it and store that in um, temp bar size. And create another label here before anybody can tell me to label it differently. <laughs> steps, 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 steps. God damn it! Oh man. Yeah. This is, it is funny. Ah, oh, do you know what? I, w I will put it in. God damn it. <laughs> Spell it right. I'm just going to copy paste it. I'm not going to type that out. And you listen, it's pialidocious. Yep, okay. Bunch of fuckers. Sure, all my alerts have gone on the screen. Get on my earphone. Uh, yeah, dang it. So, where did I store that? Here. And now, if I do this instead, what we should see is the bars reduce in size as they. No, nope, we get some kind of. Oh, because <clears throat> I need to shift it, shift it, shift it, shift it, then half it, uh, which I could. Oh, do you know it's fine? Doesn't really matter. No, it's still wrong. Why's that wrong? So we'll grab the depth. No, 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 no. Uh, roll it to the left. Oops. One, two, three. Oh, 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 one. One. Thank you for the bit, Samak. Oh, come on. <laughs> damn, damn it. I'm going to make you say that on your next stream, by the way. Uh. <laughs> this is making my life so difficult. Why did I do this? What is wrong with me? Oh, uh, I, I know what I've done wrong here. I should be comparing against that value rather than... Um, I think that will work. No. 
No, it's not worth it. It's made everything small except that one. <clears throat> uh, it's the only reason you can spell it. Edging closer to a tequila stream. Yeah, it's probably going to be what I end up doing, isn't it? <clears throat> So now you see what they're doing is when they go to the back, they get small. When they come to the front, they get big again. Which actually doesn't look too bad. Um, but you can tweak the values around a little bit to make them less small when they go to the back and bigger at the, bigger at the front. And so we can play around with these values a little bit. So let's play around with the, uh, the bar count. See how many we can get in before it starts glitching. That would be a good test. <clears throat> because obviously this is all taking, um, taking time as well. So we've got 16 bars in there, we need more colours, so I've set some more colours in. And we've got 3, 6, 9, 12, and 4 from the middle in there. Can you imagine taking a sip of tequila? God, you guys are just wrong in the head, really wrong in the head. Yeah, I need to adjust some values up here. So I think this is uh, I could have sworn I put a limit on how many labels they seem to be coming in thick and fast so. Okay, that's that's more like the bar spread I was looking at. Okay, so now if I change the bar spread to like 0.5, we should see half a circle done. Um, <clears throat> there we go. <laughs> All right, let's find a way to get these next two labels in as well. Oh, it's only 16 char significant. Ah, so it doesn't really matter, does it? Let's, let's have a look, actually. Let's go and see what, what it's actually creating. So, uh, oh, no, I think it is. It's, or do you mean when it goes to check? So you mean if I create... <coughs> How many... How many channel points to get when it does the check? Okay, how many channel points to get the beard shaved like the present? No, the beard will not come into it, sorry. You got into a mess with very long labels. Okay. I tend to, yeah, the first 16 characters definitely, definitely are always unique for my stuff, so. But yeah, you can you can see how easy this is to to kind of do now. So, um, could you make the raster bar waving instead of moving around in a circle? Yeah, I mean you can you can do some crazy stuff with it as well. So, um, oh, you mean so instead of going up and down, they just kind of waved? Yeah, I mean if I did if I fill this with um, uh, if I change this to let's have a look. Just copy that line. So this is the fun thing with this. Once you've done these things, you can really play around um, with the code and do some fun, fun stuff. So at the moment we're we're making um, the the Y position move up and down. But if we made the Y position static instead, uh, which we can do by just changing this value in here um, to something. Actually, that's probably. Uh, 
that's probably enough to do it. Let's have a look. Oh no, it's still... Oh, that's because what's happening is um, we're still incrementing uh, we're still incrementing this value here. So what I'd have to do is is move this down to here. Do it after that. Actually, let's do let's do all that first, um, and then instead of doing this, which I'm gonna comment out. Um, we would instead grab, uh, where is it? Oh no, no, it's not going to work either. Oh yeah, could do it like this. You grab that value. <laughs> the auto completes funny as well. Uh, It's not doing what I thought it was going to do at all. Alright, let's undo that. Let's try some. Let's try some random stuff out. We've got um, we've got two more labels to get in as well. Never done the rest is using the no bad line methods. On it. Okay, yeah, this. I mean, this is cool because it's not. There isn't a single raster interrupt in here at all, um, which is kind of nice. Um, it's all just pure timing, so okay. Let's let's play around with these these values a little bit. So if instead of doing um, a full circle, we did two circles in the y, but one circle in the x, then you get a figure of eight. It's also moving way too quickly now. So this is where we have two bytes in here, and we have speed. Ugh, okay, new mono ultra, new mono ultra silica volcanosis, vul vul volcanoconiosis. Wow. Okay. And then instead of incrementing bar index here, uh, we would instead Definitely makes it hard to, to write these these things. Okay, so this will allow us to slow it down a little bit as well. Oops. But actually the figure eight is quite hard to see because Yeah, that doesn't really work, does it? Yeah, let's let's add some sprites into this um, for a last last bit of challenge. Um, I'll uh, we'll just add one sprite in without any animation. We'll just we'll just put one in. I'll show you how to get it to go behind and in front. Uh, so let me just return the um, the data back to how it was. So keep that as times two. Uh, let's set the speed to uh, one hundred. So that's the normal. Uh, 
Let's knock the count down a bit because it's going to be a bit hard to see with a count that high as well. So let's let's put twelve in. I think uh, and kind of do it like that. I think. Oh no, maybe maybe that spread was fine. <laughs> yeah, that should be fine. Okay. So let me copy the, uh, the sprites from here. Actually, we've got two sets of sprites here. I don't know why. I'm going to copy them both. Not sure what they are. Oh, I don't know why. I'm, I don't know why my rasters is in this folder, but it is. Oh god, god that's annoying. I'll have to uh, fix that later. So let's load some sprites in. Let's see what sprites I actually loaded in, in in here. I can't remember where I put them there. Oh, it was sprites, be right back, okay. I need to copy both of those lines, you'll see why in a second. So we're gonna load these sprites in. Uh, we're going to set them. We're going to set one off. We're going to stick it in the middle of the screen somewhere. So we'll do this right at the top up here. Um, so we'll just have one sprite. Uh, let me load the sprites in. We'll just pick one of them. Um, so let's put this B in the middle here. So sprite sprite zero is the, is the first one. So that is actually at thirty two sprites. So. Uh, I think it's E0. And the screen is at 0400, so we put our sprite pointers in here. So that's the sprite there. Um, turn the sprite on. Let's position the sprite somewhere kind of roughly central to the screen. Hopefully we should see that. I need to set all the colours I think as well. So you can see straight away how it's affecting how it's affecting the rasters on the line. And this is where you need to really really mess around so I'm, do, I'm just going to get the sprite into kind of roughly the right position i'm going to set it to um double width and height so i think that is e019 i think um, d01b i think is it d019 or d017 d017 and d01d So there we go, we've got a sprite in the middle. So the first thing to do is to try and get rid of this jitter. Um, now the problem is, is when you when you do sprites, um, well you can see actually if I slow it down, you can see that all the timing is screwed up. Now when the when the lines are above, it's fine because at this point the timings are, are, are okay. The moment it hits, it hits this sprite, the timings go all screwy. So the way to deal with that, and the way I've dealt, let me just double check I've dealt it this way in here, which is much easier to look at by the way in here. Uh, take borrows, open border. I think I just checked for, I don't think I did any accurate timing in here at all. So actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to save this file as, because I'm just to turn the sprites off up here, I'm going to save this file as just so we've got two versions because we are going to significantly change it. So 
So the problem is that we've got now is that this timing can't be accurate, uh, this timing here. So instead what you can do is you can just do the age age old trick of um, waiting until the raster has hit the right value. So uh, we do need to load the color list, that's correct. So we need to keep that, we need to get rid of that. Uh, so now we're going to get the next line which we already have in Y actually, so you can do it with Y. And if it's not the same, then we're just going to repeat. Okay, we're getting some slowdown. We probably probably hit the there but you can see this is where I get that glitch down this side here the timing is really difficult to get right and that's because now we're not we're not doing timing we're just waiting for the rasa to reach the edge and when it reaches the edge it goes over here why it's been so slow as it goes around I don't know it's like it's going every other frame or something uh, so let's just check this Okay, we can probably move that into here, which will mean that that color changes a bit quicker, which actually might fix that glitch, because we've only got one sprite there, so that might fix it. Um, the problem is, is, why is this not... Let's try and see what happens. Oh yeah, CPU throttle, and that'll be it. Thank you. So actually they're pretty stable. Um, we are getting the wrong border color for some reason uh, down here. Oh, because it should be store wide, not store S. There we go. Yeah, there we go. So we've got we've now got a sprite in the middle of the screen and it's not affecting our timings. Now if we add more sprites it will affect the timings as I showed you on on here. So on this on this one I have three three sprites there, it's enough to screw the time up. Now you can mess around with the sprite numbers because different sprites read at different times. It could be that if I just shift one of these sprites to a different location, um, I, I even say sprite 0, 1 and 2, it's actually using six sprites here, which is probably what's causing the problem because I've got high res overlays on these, um, which is the, the grey outline. Um, so there's probably things I could do to fix this, I just didn't have time to do it. So. Um, okay, I'm going to take a quick break. When I come back, we will um, we will add uh, depth to this sprite so we can actually decide where it gets drawn, and we'll also turn the multi color on on it properly. Right, so I'll be back in uh, two minutes, guys. And I'm back. Uh, thank you for the follow, Pew with the Dead, and Andre Wagson and Andre Varga Sorensen. Welcome to the stream, guys. I have to say, by the way, guys, if you are doing something like this, um, try and try and optimize your code a lot more than I have. This is isn't the neatest code in the world, uh, but it's functional. It does the job, and sometimes that's all you need, though, is to do the, do the job. Um, okay, so how do we make it look like the sprite is behind the bars when they're in front and? In front of the bars when they're at the back we use the depth buffer same way as we did before now conveniently no not with yeah yeah don't don't do labels like this and we've got one more label to go as well which Hayes is gonna love what's playing in your PC uh, uh, top shooter was playing then it's a retro pie it's the um, Oh, I can't remember what it's called now. 
but it's uh, it's like a tracked mode for a retro Pi, so it's on micro machines at the moment on the NES, which actually looks really good for a NES. Um, so in this loop, we we grab this value here. This value is the color that we're going to display, but it's on the next line. But it's also the depth that we're going to display as well. So what we can do. Um, is we can we actually need to get the depth of of the next line so at this point here we're just looping so we can grab the depth of the next line is it the next line let's just grab, let's do it on the current line I think we'll need to adjust this it's either the previous line or this line Oh wow, hey Sinai, welcome to the stream, dude. Ah, oh, that sucks, cheers. I, I mean, fingers crossed, the uh, the 5G has held up quite well. It went down once um, at the beginning of the lockdown, um, but not for long, you know, maybe about half an hour or so. But that's the only time it's gone down in the whole, th uh, whole time. I mean, it's I've had some router restarts here and there. Um, but other than that, it's been been pretty good. So what we need to do is we need to know uh, is the current thing being drawn in front of the screen or at the back of the screen, and we can do that really easily by using a branch if minus check, because if if the depth buffer is eight or above, then it's going to be treated as a negative number. So we can say um, bars in front, and I've now got to put. Ranelli's I'm not even sure that's going to work as a label. I mean, I'll give it a try, but um, I'm going to have to put underscores in, and I don't think you can have the. I don't think you can have the question mark on the end, so that's going to have to go. And this is the bars behind. I regret, I regret putting that, that in. Yeah, it was Rinelli requesting that, yeah. <laughs> and so what do we do, right? If the bars, if the bars are behind, then we, we just continue displaying as normal. Uh, but we will need to do something. I'll, I'll explain what we're going to do in a second. Um, I just need to find the right memory address on here. Uh, there we go. If the bars are in front, then we need to stop displaying the sprite. Now, the easiest way to do that is just to switch the VIC bank. Because if we change the VIC bank to somewhere where the data is blank for those sprites, um, then, then it will stop displaying. And the easiest way to do that is to load... Uh, Six, and we'll just go up one bank to this one. Pull this bars done, and then we just need to make sure that we turn it back on when the bars are are behind as well, which is one one like so. might be oh something weird has gone on there uh, uh, why is that not working have I so one one should be zero to one dd zero yep Let's just get rid of that for a second. I just want to make sure that it's changing the colors of the bars and everything. Oh, because we're changing the accumulator, that's why. 
so that's fine. We just need to use X instead. There we go. And so now then the bars go behind and in front. Actually, we don't need to change anything. They, they seem to be spot on. So it's a really, really simple effect. Um, and all that's actually happening is this sprite is being turned on and off based on the depth of the, the bar that's covering it or behind it as well. That creates quite a nice nice little um, little effect. And then you can do all sorts of stuff with the sprites. You can have them animating, you can have them bouncing left and right. Um, <coughs> you could create a nice logo out of a couple of sprites strung together. Um, you can play around with the um, double width and height registers. You can turn multicolor on as well, which I probably should do. 01C is it? Uh, yeah, do 01C. Thanks for the follow, Jan Sorted. Welcome to the stream. There we go. Uh, I just read that the NES PPU was actually a complete CPU. Can you explain the differences from the VIC 2? Uh, I couldn't tell you, to be honest. I, I honestly couldn't tell you. Um, I don't know enough about the NES at all. Um, I actually don't know a lot about how the VIC works as a chip. I mean, I know how it works when it's paired up with the C64 PLA and um, CPU, but um, I don't actually know how it works internally. But yeah, I mean, this is this is basically it. This is what what I did. So. Um, <clears throat> has anyone got any questions about what we've done or any suggestions for me to do um, that don't involve putting ridiculously long labels into the code, long and obfuscated labels? <clears throat> yeah, I guess not. Um, Let's try and see how many of these we can get in. Let's see how many bars we can get in before it goes break. You say you're not a demo coder, but you can. <laughs> I'm not a demo coder. The things, the things I'm doing, I'm doing because I like to understand how these things work. So when you when you write games, you can you can code a game, right, and you can do something fairly decent but if you want to get the best out of the machine then you really need to understand all the little tricks and all the little things that you can do where am i on the auxiliary projects uh luma is done and luma is out um i bet i don't have a luma command do i oh my god i don't even have a luma command that's really bad Let me find Luma. So this is still um, a ve oh, thank you, Eldritch. Uh, uh, the Zelda game secret. No, I'm not doing the Zelda game. Is just something um, I liked the idea of. I, I've I've looked at um, was it Mythos we did on one of the dissects, and I liked how that worked. Um, I was actually trying to do something using the same technique. Um, a while ago, but I kind of abandoned it because there were some kind of technical limitations of what you could do with that technique. Um, but it was going to be more like a don't starve type of game than a Zelda game. Same sort of view as Zelda, but more like a survival game. Uh, the boxing game is on hold. 
um, I've just kind of lost lost a bit of the drive to kind of finish it off. Um, it will get done, but it's just it's it's on hold. I, I'm working most of my time now is spent um, either trying to draw assets for Dot Cosmos, which I'm really struggling with, um, or um, doing some re, re um, kind of some additional work for um, for another publisher, which hopefully we should get finished in the next six months or so, I think, so, um, um, but it's, I, it's, an ex it's been an exciting project because I've learned an awful lot on it and I've had to completely reverse engineer something, so like, like I've been doing on the dissect streams, um, but I've taken a game and completely turned it from a PRG into readable, manageable source codes that I can mess around with in Geek Assembler, um, so I've been I've been doing that quite a lot, and that's that's going to be my main focus for the next next few months anyway. Um, I want to get that finished. Then after that, I don't know. Um, the the game stream on Saturday is working quite well. I think we're getting close to the end of the close to the end of that now. Um, it's it's going to come more down to polish and. Um, polish assets, level design, uh, things like that. So hopefully in the next six months or so that should kind of come to an end. And then I might start doing parasol stars on stream, um, but there won't be any code sharing on that. But I, I may enlist people's help to do graphics and stuff. So um, I look forward to kind of picking that up again, especially considering I've learned a lot since I, I started doing parasol stars. So. Um, what were the limitations in the don't starve thing so the limitations were to do with the agsp scroller the way that that works um means that it's not really a limitation it's just it's well no it is a limitation so the problem with agsp scrolling is you're scrolling um because you're scrolling left and right and up and down really fast by shifting um the position where the vic starts drawing by using line crunch and stuff um you get to a point where the sprite pointers get drawn on the screen so you either need to use a, a raster to to change the sprite pointers at that location to exactly the thing you need them to be to display properly on the screen or you need to design your maps around um, a small patch every now and again being unusable so you have to find find a pattern that you can use that looks all right in the map and then and then use that and i just didn't really fancy messing around with that too much uh, when can I talk more about that? Um, uh, it's not up to me, unfortunately. Um, but um, once once it once it gets announced, I'll I will I will kind of share more details on it. Um, <laughs> just just reading Andy's uh, comment in uh, Andy Magic Knight's comment in Discord. You vastly overestimated the maturity of your following. <laughs> Yes, I did. What tools am I using for reverse engineering games? So I use um, I use a combination of things. So I use the C64 debugger to kind of understand what's going on in the game. Um, I use Infiltrator Disassembler to kind of to try and work out where important pieces of code or graphical data are. Uh, and then I use my own uh, scripts, which will convert um, chunks of memory into readable source code. <laughs> God damn it, how many of those things have I put? <laughs> I've got no more labels to do. I've got no more labels. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm doing. Uh, and one of the things I'm doing um, with the reverse engineering is, uh, and this is something I do want to touch on on a, one of these streams at some point, is... Um, is, is converting disk loaders to cartridge as well. So searching through game code, finding where uh, the, it's, it's doing disk access, um, finding the files on the disk that it's actually accessing, turning them into packages in banks on a cartridge and then swapping out the disk loader for cartridge loading code, uh, which is a challenge in itself, uh, but it's kind of, kind of cool when it happens. 
Um, Metroid is 128k will never happen, sadly. That's the the problem there is that it's 128k, but the NES itself um, only has a limited amount of memory, so um, it has to bank things in from cartridge, and we can easily do that on the C64. We've got 512 kilobyte and and one megabyte cartridges that are quite easy to to work with, so it can definitely be done. <clears throat> the problem you've got with the NES is is the, the actually the biggest problem with the NES is the screen size. Um, you try you, you get the, the 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 forty by twenty five characters or the three twenty by two hundred screen of a C sixty four, and then compare that to um, compare that to the NES, which I think is is it two forty by. 220 or something like that um it, it doesn't fit quite right so you need to be careful how you do it so i imagine one of the biggest problems zero page had was was finding a way to change the level data just enough so that it still was the same levels but um <clears throat> but fit properly into the screen and then of course you've got the double width characters as well and the fact that sprites are very different so i think sprites on the nez are um they 16 by 8 or 8 by 16 or they might even be 8 by 8 actually um, so you've got the problem of dealing with that um, as well um, <clears throat> so a lot of sprites on the NES are joined together to make bigger sprites so that in that case they're kind of alright but then you you really need to know to, to make a good conversion you need to know are these sprites always joined together if they are then just use a single sprite and then you have to have um, you have to have a good multiplexer as well because I think the the NES is 32 or 64 sprites I think it's the same on the line limitations 8 per line but oh and then the the, the third thing is the um, um, the sound chip as well is very different on the NES um, so the SID can do it um, but obviously converting converting music players from NES to SID is a whole whole minefield of, of things but i i would like to see at some point maybe not now but maybe 10 years in the future or something when when people have had even longer to do crazy things to um to have some kind of program where you can put a nes rom in and it will do its best to convert it to c64 um i mean it's very very difficult i wouldn't say it's impossible um but it's it's definitely possible it's, it's just incredibly difficult but i think it could be done uh it's not the sort of thing i'd want to do though be, be really difficult um you want to see nez metroid yeah uh, yeah with, with luma as well we've done really well guys we're up to uh just Three three dollars sixteen short of uh, five hundred dollars um, gross revenue, which is pretty cool. Um, I mean, it's it's. I mean, it is a paid game, so you have to kind of buy it to play it. But um, that to put that into perspective against Dot Cosmos One, Dot Cosmos One made about. Actually, I can have a look. How much did it make? I think it was made about seven hundred dollars or something like that. Uh, six forty, six forty-two dollars, um, with one hundred eighty-two payments. This has made Luma has made almost five hundred uh, with ninety payments. So really good going, guys. Um, I think that I, I, I kind of want to put that label in, but I don't really have anything to label right now. Uh, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to see how many, see how many of these bars we can get in. So let's put uh, 20 bars in. Uh, let's see what happens. Uh, okay. Oh, I know what's going on there. That's because we don't have enough colours. I 
I mean, it's handling it. It'd be interesting to know, actually, just... Let's do some border increments. I want to see just how much time it's taken to do all the bar updates. So this is where the bar updates happen. So I'm just going to increment the border color. And then before we jump back, I'm going to decrement the border color. Just want to see how much how's the time it's using. Uh, it's, I mean, it's using a fair bit, but it's not. I could probably squeeze another four or so bars in there. And it's not optimal at all, this code as well, so. I'm pretty sure with some tweaking you can get that right down. Yeah, see when it, when it reaches that point, it goes goes funny. Let's try sixteen. So this is twenty two bars. Yeah, it goes funny. So I think twenty is about the limit we can get into this. Without optimization, anyway, like I say, you can do plenty of stuff in here to probably optimize this, and make this work work better. Let's try spreading it out so it's just a complete circle. It doesn't look as good when it's a complete circle. I don't think. I think it works a lot better when it's when it's half values. Also, it's a lot more stable when it's a full thing rather than half a thing. So what happens if we do? Like a quarter, does it go absolutely crazy? The depth calculations go bonkers at this point. The reason this is glitch, in fact, let's fix this glitch. So I know why this is. You see, when they're all at the front, they kind of shimmer. Um, <clears throat> and the reason that's doing that is because when we do our depth comparison, uh, which is, where is it? God damn it, you guys, and these stupid label names. Yeah, when we do, when we do this here, we're comparing a value that includes the color as well. So what we should be doing is adding that value like that, and that should hopefully reduce the shimmer. It probably still will be there, but it won't be as bad. And that looks just as bad, to be fair. So if it's... the colour is more than... equal to or more than... Yeah. Tenth step, Fatty Label. Fatty Label. Uh, okay, that didn't make any difference. <laughs> but I kind of, I kind of like this. It feels, feels kind of nice. Um, one thing I'll, I'll quickly show you as well. I thought this was really interesting. Um, so this is what I was doing. Um, I was messing around with with timings. Uh, let's get rid of the timing table. Um, so I was just trying to find different ways to stabilize uh, the raster. Um, and this is uh, this is the same suppressing bad line. So I'm, I'm basically just pushing the text down. Um, there is no if I, if I just if I get rid of this and just do. Um, And you see that the text is here, and all, all this is doing is just pushing all the bad lines down. Um, <clears throat> but the reason I want to show you this um, is you can see these these bars perfectly stable. Um, and in fact, if I go into uh, debug mode, you see they're stable right to the edge here, super super stable. 
And the interesting thing is, I wonder if you can work out what's going on here. Because if I run it in, in here, and I skip one frame at a time, so uh, let me just find the block of code. It's going to be it's around about here. Okay. So I'm just going to run the code, and you see it's doing this loop for ages. Well, actually, it only did it three times then, and then and then it jumps into the stable raster, and you can see again because we push the screen down, displays wrong in here. <clears throat> this is actually using a technique. Um, is it this one? Hang on. Yeah. This is using a technique that um, a guy called Krill um, has been investigating this year. Uh, so Krill is the guy that does the disk loader that a lot of people use. Um, and he was investigating a way to uh, stabilize a raster using, um, using a kind of loop. Um, and what he does is he basically he waits for a position on the screen. In this case, we wait for the bottom of the screen. It really doesn't matter where I do this. As long as it's a, a stable line. In fact, it doesn't even need to be a stable line. Um, so he waits for that position, and then he basically wastes some cycles, and then checks the position again. And if the position is is not the same, um, then he'll retry it until it is the same. And what it's doing is it's waiting until until this this um, this loop finishes at the end of a line is basically timing how many cycles um, it, it takes to get to the end of the line and so uh, there's only one valid position where the raster can jitter to where this check succeeds and that position is right at the end of the line so it's, it's just a clever way of you keep you keep testing you, you, you wait for the line to hit you waste some cycles then you test are you at the end of the line or have you already gone over if you've gone over you try again and you keep doing it until you don't until the jitter is such that you don't go over the line and then at that point you've got a stable raster so it wastes a couple of couple of frames to do it so this you know this every time it does this it's an, it's one more frame wasted um, but it's completely stable which is i, I think really impressive so I was trying to find a way to use this. Um, I mean, we could use this in the in the in the um, in, in this routine as well. Um, in fact, let's let's have a go at doing that. Actually, let's let's move this and stick it into into here. Um, oh no, we can't because we're yeah, we can't because we're doing this every frame. We're doing it in a set position in the middle. Uh, but it's really interesting. Now, I'll see if I can find a link to. Um, um, so the routine that he's done. Uh, was it that one? No, hang on. Uh, stable raster. Where the hell is it now? Uh, making stable raster routines. See this one? There's so many ways to do these uh, these stable rasters, um, but well, I thought this was kind of one of the coolest ways to do it. Um, oh my god! Why can't I find it now? Ah, there we go. Yeah, so. Let me post a link to this. So it's the very last section of this. Um, so the, this actual article goes on about using a timer. So one of the things you can do is you can you can set a CIA timer to count cycles, and then you can have that count from uh, uh, from eight down to zero, and then you can read that value whenever you go into a new line, and then you'll know how far through that line you are you'll know what your jitter is you'll know whether you're right at the beginning of the line or you're seven cycles in just by reading that value 
but then right at the end of this he posted a little thing um there's a an article on the forums about it as well this is when i like csdv this is when i think csdv is really useful when people share this thing this sort of stuff and they're they're genuinely trying to find new and interesting things to do with the c64 but the csdb article has a, a version of this this is only 14 bytes long um my version is a is a little bit longer but it essentially does the same same thing basically uh which is it, it times it times the length of a line uh to 63 cycles or 62 or whatever it is um and then when it does the comparison it can then check have have i gone onto a new line if i have then my stabilization didn't work try again and it just keeps trying until it does get a stable raster so it's, it's like verifying that your 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 line is stable um i think that's it really guys um unless anybody's got anything else they want me to to go over um what did i say i was going to do i was going to talk about uh Tricks for animating them, keeping them stable, depth sorting. Yeah, I think we've kind of covered most of that. Let's have a look, see if we can raid. I'm going to have to reject your... Well, actually, I'll keep the label thing there for the next dissect stream. Um, but I'm not going to do it on the Saturday stream. Uh... It's just it's too much. Uh, who's on? Air Jerry's playing Fortnite. Why is he playing Fortnite? Uh, anybody got any suggestions? Who to raid? I'm not seeing anybody interest. Simon WGB's on. I don't know what he's playing though. Hang on. I like to raid a Commodore streamer if possible. <clears throat> uh... Oh, he is playing C64. Alright, cool. We'll raid Simon then. Uh, there we go. Cool. Well, thanks for coming along tonight, guys. Um, it was uh, <laughs> difficult with the labels. I'm, I'm going to have a rethink about about those. Uh, but hopefully, you guys can you've learned something from that, and you can see that you don't necessarily need to set up a, a raster interrupt to to have stable stable rasters as long as you understand the timings and what's going on. Um, you can still create kind of nice effects and do some funky things. And also that said depth buffers are not just for 3D stuff. You can use them to do cool effects as well. Um, all right, cool. Uh, I'll see you guys on Saturday for the usual game stream. Until then, ciao.